business and bourbon. You project big, I'm dude. <laughs> You're five seven, but I see six one, brother. I'm telling you. I took this route, and yes, I do wear sweatpants often in my workplace. <laughs> this is the anti-entrepreneur porn show. Period. We all have fantastic ideas, but it's the action that we usually lack. Like, what made you say, "Okay, boom, I'm going to quit and I'm going to do this"? That was the catalyst, right? Baby number one and then baby number two to expand the business. We didn't just dive into this without having something to fall back on. And my wife, she's got a nice, steady job. So the moral to this story, guys, is make sure you got a good partner in your life. Right. That was not the best move for our family at the time. So I had to get a little bit creative when I got to Atlanta after we got married. So at the end right. of the day, even if stuff doesn't work out, right. you can make I meth. Can. Breaking bad with Sam. <laughs> we don't duck, we don't dodge. I should drop the mic on that shit. I like that one. It motivates me to stay the course and continue driving, but it also creates that self-doubt. Like, oh, maybe I should go be normal to fit in better. But like at the end of the day, I know it doesn't matter. I haven't taken another paycheck since 2013. So something must be going okay. Okay, going okay, going okay. Welcome back to Business and Bourbon, where we have real talk with real people. I'm Ron L. Richards, the creator and your host. You know, I'm privileged to talk to and interact with and coach a lot of amazing entrepreneurs. And you know, there's one thing that I find very consistent amongst a lot of successful entrepreneurs, and that's what drives them. I think you'd be surprised. It's not money, it's not cars, it's not houses, it's not other trappings, it's freedom, yeah freedom. So on today's episode, I invite Sam into the bar and he sits down with me and has some drinks. And you know what we talk about? We talk about the freedom that his business has given him. And we talk about his journey as a PhD chemist to now a successful fitness business owner. So with that said, it's time to go, guys. Let's hop to it. Let's get into it. Grab your glass, grab your mug, grab your cup, whatever it is that you like to drink out of. Pour your very favorite beverage into it. Sit down right next to us here at the bar and enjoy a little business and bourbon. All right. Welcome back to Business and Bourbon, where we have real talk with real people. The weather is changing. It's chilly outside, but it's warm inside and the business is still popping in Atlanta. I'm at King and Duke here in the heart of the business district of Buckhead in Atlanta. Again, if you guys get out here, make sure you come out and let them know let them know you heard about it on Business and Bourbon and you had to come through and see where the Business and Bourbon guy hangs out and gets his drinks on. You guys are probably hearing some great background noise because it is popping in here right now. I'm seeing business deals being done all left and right. That's why we come here. I want you to feel the energy. I want you to feel what we feel when we sit down with another great entrepreneur and talk business. So with all that said, it's time for that. I'm going to introduce my next guest. This guy, he's got a really interesting story. I think you guys are going to really dig and a lot of you can identify with. I'm not going to steal his thunder. I want him to get into it. And before I screw up your last name, Sam, tell him how to pronounce your last name, brother. McGovero. Sam McGovero is here live on Business and Bourbon. What's going on, brother? Not much, man. Thanks for having me. Man, it is truly my pleasure. I'm happy to have you on. Happy to have you share your story. Before we get into it, let's talk about really quick. What do you do? I own a fitness and corporate wellness business, and we provide solutions for individuals, solutions for companies. We look to improve employee engagement. We look to improve the health of a corporation, health of a business, and we attack it from a variety of different fields, both the fitness and nutrition piece, and then you tie in sleep and stress management. And then we look at kind of the social interactions that both employees have mm -hmm. and the individuals we train have with those around them. So... Here's the fun thing about that, guys, how he got there. <laughs> this is going to be fun. And I think this is something yeah, that a, a lot story. of you guys are going to be able to identify with um, as you think about changing your direction in your life. You're like, hey, I got this degree. I went to school for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it is, years. I'm like, you know what? I got to it's to start a business. Yeah. Well, this guy did that. <laughs> and, and we're going to have some fun talking about that. Before we get into that, I want the people to know who you are. So I always ask a few fun questions, right? I just want people to see who you are. This is right. what business and bourbon is about, like vulnerability and no. little fun. Let's give the people some real talk. Before we get there, one of the questions I asked you in your survey, which we do a pre-show survey is, 
I always ask people about hip hop because I'm a hip hop head. I'm a hip hop kid, man. I'm, yeah, I'm from that generation. So right. I said, what's your favorite hip hop? You said, what What was your answer to that? I mean, I like a little Biggie, right? I mean, it is, but it, it, before that, go. But I'm a 90s grunge rock junkie and still living there. And I love you know, it. That's it. That's if you come in our gym all day long, that's what you're going to hear. Is that what it is? Until someone grabs the iPod and changes on us, right? So I'm a, I'm so a, if you guys you know, could see Sam right, right now, and if you're watching the content, you can see he's got a grunge shirt. He's got his plaid shirt on. He doesn't have a plaid <laughs> shirt on. I'm just kidding. I got a flannel on from 1993. <laughs> the, the flannel, yeah. <laughs> uh, so who's your favorite group? Grunge? Grunge. Um, Smashing Pumpkins and Alice in Chains. Smashing Hands Pumpkins. Down. Billy. Yep. Uh, okay, Hands all right. Down. All right, all right. I, I can get with a little uh, grunge myself because yeah. that's the generation. Coming like shaking knees this year. I, I'm going to go. Are you really? They're coming. Yeah, Smashing Pumpkins. So, yeah, I, uh -huh. I'm going to let you guys know. Yeah, I graduated high school in 1994. <laughs> and in 1994, there was no bigger band than Nirvana. Nirvana. They were just everything Nirvana. back then. So... Nirvana, and you had, um, who's the other Seattle group? The other Seattle group yeah. is Pearl Jam. Sound Pearl Jam. Nirvana, you had all of but, them but coming in and out. But they were kind of leading Pearl, it. Pearl Jam. Yeah. yeah. yeah they were, okay. They were, they were there. So, yeah, I get with that yeah. a little bit, and I can oh, get yeah. with that in the gym, too. Gets, it gets me fired up. Yeah. All right, cool. But if it is a hip-hop hip -hop, time, it's, gotta be biggie. it's biggie. Yeah. yeah. I'm Juicy. not mad at that. Juicy. Which is also a 94 uh, joint. Like, 93, 94. Yeah. yeah okay. All you right. were graduating. I was turning 13 or 14. Man, shut up. Time, man. Why you had to go there, bro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's why I don't tell people. Uh, no, just kidding. Listen, I was watching this um, Dion Cole. I don't know if you're familiar, but he's a comedian. He's hilarious. Mm -hmm. He's on the show Blackish. Yeah. And he had a stand up. And his stand up, he's like, Yeah, I'm old. But he's like, I'm going to be the baddest old dude out there like it's like yeah hey i'm gonna be the one that walks in and those young girls are they gonna have to think they're like hmm yeah maybe he can <laughs> maybe i can get with him sort of thing so like that's how i look at it listen i will embrace it because i'm still pretty young but as i add every year it's like i'm just gonna be the best version of me every year stay young stay fit stay healthy keep my mind sharp you still don't have a wrinkle on you so you're good check that out <laughs> yeah i think that's pretty good too but that's hydration people right hydration drink your water drink water speaking of that what are we drinking i'm drinking an old-fashioned ah is that that your favorite drink only when i go out yeah i'll never make one at home it's too much work i don't <laughs> muddle anything at home so manhattan at the house no old-fashioned here what are you drinking nice it's called have and have not don't ask me what's in it it's just good i trust them i'm like family up in this piece yeah. so i just say hey guys make me something that's good and they make it and it looks like this and it's if you guys could see this it's super pretty <laughs> it's kind of like blush in color but it's tasty and it's got a little pepper in it so if you get in here try it all right let's clink it up cheers all right, not great sound on that clink, guys. So we're, I'm like, clink, there it is. <laughs> All right, let me get a little sip. So tell me about your life a little bit. You're married, you got married. kids. Tell married, me about two kids, six and three, both girls. Mm. So, you know, you say a nice prayer when you're 16 to be surrounded by beautiful women, you end up with a wife and two girls, That's right? <laughs> sold. That's the way it happens, That's man. That's what happens. Let's not just gloss over that piece. Okay. Dude, you got a tough road ahead of you in about, about seven, eight <laughs> years. You got those teenagers in the house. With yep. Them. Yep. So I, I will be praying for you. I mean, the good part is that their mother has done everything possible that they could do. So I'm very lucky to have her. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. That's yeah. what's up. So you've got young kids. Yeah. And before we get into your journey of where you're at right now, I don't want to gloss over that because... That's a challenge sure is. in business. And your wife works full works time. Full time, yep. Right. So how do you guys balance the young kids? And has the business helped you in that respect? Or talk one to me of about the, that. So one of the reasons I got into the business was to have a little bit more flexibility, right? So if I don't have a boss, I don't have to request time off. I just got to make sure we're bringing money in when I'm not there, right? So one of the reasons was to see if we could give this a go and if I could be around a lot for the kids and I do a lot of the homework anyway you know the the cooking a lot of the cleaning that doesn't mean my wife's not doing anything but she does the doctor's appointments the scheduling the stuff that I loathe doing she does all that stuff but when it comes to everyday cooking you know my background's a chemist cooking's easy for me it's zero stress so I cook pretty much every night nice. you know, on occasion she'll cook but she does a lot of the prepping on a Sunday and it works mm -hmm. um, getting to kids events you know she works all the way out in Shambly you know from where we live and the gym is the gym's 200 yards from my house 
So, and school is another quarter mile in nice. the house. So it's easier for me to get to and from with the kids. And, you know, my wife does her fair share, of course, but, you know, it makes sense for me to be around to do the day-to-day -day stuff with the kids when I can. So what I hear in that, and I want everyone to pay attention, is that the win for you and your entrepreneurship right now and your entrepreneurial journey is being there for your kid, having that freedom yeah. to be able to take care of your right. kids in ways that are, in some ways, I mean, they're equally as important as financial. Yes, we, want, we all need to financially support our kids. But beyond that, like being able to be there to support them for what it is they need to do, be able to have that flexibility to, to go to the school when right. somebody's sick or... Or like today, I had lunch with my three-year-old. They had Thanksgiving lunch at 11 o'clock this morning. So, you know, if I'm working a, a corporate job or something like that where I'd have to request time off to get away, instead, you know, I left the gym at 10.56 and got to school at 11. And it was great. Had lunch with my kid for 45 minutes, came back, did some work, and well, then I came here. Right? That's so what's up. It's great. That's um, what's up. Sam, let me ask you a perfect, question. But. So... Your daughter, which daughter was it? Your six-year-old? My three-year-old. Your three-year-old. Yeah. I right. actually couldn't go to the six-year-old yesterday because I had clients and I had to work. So uh, my so wife you, went to that one. So your three-year-old, the event you went to this morning, it's awesome. Does she know how much you made last year? No. Does she know how much, what about this year? Does no. she know? No. Does, does she, she care? care? No. Exactly. Right. That's what's awesome, dude. Right. I love that. And that's something that we all need to take from that, right. take from your experience. I think, it, like, at the end of the day, if you have kids and you're in entrepreneurship, your focus should be on the freedom that it gives you to be a better person to those people that love you because it can go the other direction. Right. And if it goes the other direction, that's how you end up with kids that drive Ferraris and Lamborghinis, but hate you. <laughs> right. Right. That, right. And that's not the goal. Yes. <laughs> I, have kids I would, I would hope not. I no. would hope not. I know it's not my goal. No. So you threw out a little teaser there. You talked about science and this is the thing. Okay. Before we get into this, like I want everyone to listen closely because there's a lot of you out there that, again, you've gone out there, you got your degree, you did what you were supposed to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's awesome. You always have that to fall back on. But now you've got that itch. You're like, man, I want to go open up a yogurt shop. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a engineer. And you know what? I want to go open up a Papa John's. Right. Because you want some of these things we talk about, freedom, whatever it is. You did that. Tell the people, tell, tell us about what you went to school for and what you were doing before what you do now. So I did undergrad as a chemistry major with the intent of going into chemical engineering. So I go to a master's program, get into chemical engineering, and then just kind of go in that route because engineers, you know, they make great money, have yeah. good careers. It's safe. There's never going to be a time when we don't need engineers. Chemical and, engineers. Uh, chemical engineers, specifically. So at the end right. of the day, even if stuff doesn't work out, you right. can make I, meth. I, like I, Totally. Because like, that's <laughs> what you do. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Like Whole Heisenberg, series, you can, right? That's it. Right? Breaking bad yeah. with Sam. But right, anyway, right. go ahead. God, if anybody's listening to this, I'm not making math. He's right? not making no, math. That's that. <laughs> uh, hey guys, Ron out here. Just wanted to take a brief moment to thank you for supporting the Business and Bourbon podcast and supporting Business and Bourbon live events. If you're a regular listener or you've attended one of the events, then you understand the importance of wisdom that it's something that's earned and not learned. And also how that can give you an edge in your business and on the sales floor. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or having me deliver a sales workshop to your sales team, you can reach out to me and my team at ronell at ronellrichards.com. Neither myself or a member of my team will be in touch with you. Please have. Thanks again for listening and enjoy the rest of the show. But no, I, I went into that. It was safe. It was, I enjoyed it. And then by my, you know, sophomore year of college, I had already enjoyed chemistry so much that I scrapped the engineering idea. I was like, I'm going to go to grad school, go get a PhD in chemistry. Yeah. So that was my next track. You know, I did research in the summers while I was in undergrad and then graduated college in 2003, took 10 days off and then started grad school on a research fellowship. So it was you know, very quick getting mm -hmm. into chemistry really deeply and then spent the next four years doing research chemistry, got out, did a little bit of like scientific consulting. Um, and then I went in, into teaching for five years. And while I was teaching, I developed a wellness program um, for the employees there. And that was sort of what really spurred that, whoa, I could maybe do this for real. Like I could go and, and drop the chemistry thing and, and help people get healthy for 
for life. Yeah. And uh, start a business around that. And so that's been going, you know, since 2009. Was it that you noticed the passion or you noticed the business opportunity? Which one was it? Yes. Right. It's, it's both. Right. So as I looked around that campus where I was teaching, I saw people driving golf carts to get from building to building. And, you know, it's a large private school, looks a lot like a college. So the buildings are spaced out, but there's no reason somebody should be driving a golf cart, you know, across campus. What example does that set for students? What does that set for yourself? You know, you're trapped in a desk all day or in a building all day and you're not out walking around in the sunshine. You're driving a golf cart. Yeah. So I noticed that and there was nothing on campus at that time to help employees get fit. You know, there was it's a very awesome, wonderful school with great resources, but they weren't doing that yet. Yeah. So I pitched this wellness program and, you know, that's like I said, it's been going since 2009. It's still going. and We're still there. So what I want to know is why what made you make that leap? Because, you know, you've got this comfortability right that comes with the gig comes with the job and hey i went to school for all this stuff and so yeah you had some passion and you noticed a business opportunity but so does everybody right lots of people out there everyone's got the next pet rock like we all have fantastic ideas we all have passions but it's the action that we usually lack like what made you say okay boom i'm gonna quit and i'm gonna do this I mean, it was building for a little while. I was moonlighting in the fitness business kind of morning and evening and, you know, working 12 to 14 hour days because I could. We didn't have kids then. And then find out we're pregnant and, and that's it. You got to make a decision. You're either going to stay doing what you're doing or you're going to take a leap and, you know, dive into this fitness thing full time. And that was really the catalyst. Like I wanted to be home more, have a flexible schedule. I couldn't work 14 to 16 hour days you know, trying to do both. And I had an opportunity to take on a business partner, join the gym he had already established and then keep pushing the corporate wellness piece. And we did that. We opened another gym, sold a gym. And, you know, that all started in 2013 officially. So I haven't taken a paycheck outside of myself since 2013. So yeah. Sam, some people, you said part of the catalyst was when your wife got pregnant. Yeah. I think most people would be like, okay, pregnant. Okay. Now super conservative. I'm afraid. So right. Yeah, I, this business idea, that's cool, but I want to get yeah. a paycheck. I mean, there's a pattern here, right? Like, that was the first catalyst. When we found out we were having the second kid, that's when the current Smugs Fitness location opened, like, about three weeks after we had second baby. So there's, like, a pattern here. I don't know why it happens that way, but when things get kind of stressful and tough, if I know I can sort of rely on myself and dig deep and look in the mirror and be like, you're responsible for this, it seems to make things get a little bit better. So... We trusted it. My wife trusted it, not without some reservations, but that was the catalyst, right? Baby number one and then baby number two to expand the business. And so you were able to turn that around and really use it as a motivation. Yeah. Like, OK, I'm going to make this happen right. for them right. instead of being afraid to do it because of them. Right. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's something that a lot of people can take from man. because some of you are listening to this thing right now and you're teetering and you're looking for all the reasons why to not, why to be more conservative. And trust me, you guys know this is the anti-entrepreneur porn show, period. Y'all know that. So we're never going to be like, oh, just throw all the caution to the wind. Uh, no, but yeah. by sharing Sam's story here and your example of what you did and turning that around and using that as fuel, I think that's probably something that people can apply to their own lives. Absolutely. You know? And let me add to that too, though. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's a calculated risk. You always have to ask, what's the absolute worst thing that can happen? Yes. Right? Like, if this doesn't work, what can happen? And for me, the absolute worst case scenario is I go back and teach. And teaching is not a bad thing at all. It's fantastic. I love it. Did it in grad school. Did it out of grad school. Right? It's, if that's the worst possible place I can go, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah. So if you can figure out what your worst case scenario is and you can deal with it and accept it and be proud even there, then I'd say, you know, take that calculated risk. Right. Yeah. You gotta so I think that's a great ad. One of those calculated risks and things that people are going to be afraid of, though, is the financial thing. Right? right. The financial aspect of it. So, yes, you can go back to teach. But like, what about the money? Yeah. I mean, we again, another calculated risk. We saved a lot. We didn't just dive into this without having something to fall back on. And my wife, you know, she's got a nice steady job that she loves. Um, yeah. That's why we're in Atlanta. She got that job three months after we got engaged. And I was going to go do a postdoc up in Pennsylvania and uproot her from, you know, full-time government employment for $32,000 a year as a postdoc. Like that 
that was not the best move for our family at the time. So I had to get a little bit creative when I got to Atlanta after we got married. So, you know, you, that it's a calculated risk, but I also had that steadiness from my wife that like, we're not going to go hungry. Um, as long as she's still working, we're not going to go hungry. And she yeah. likes what she does. So it's a, allows me to be creative and take some risk knowing that she's steady yeah. and I can always fall back on that teaching if, yes. if I needed to. Those are the stories that need to be told. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's what people need to know. Um, it's not because, again, if you were to just look at a lot of social media, you look at a lot of popular media, they're going to say, dude, just go do it. And hey, a business is a risk, period. Right. So, yes, like I'm a push the chips in guy. Right. I just push the chips, all the chips in. Let's go. But I know what it is that I'm signing up for. A lot of people don't really realize that and they make that decision and they're not calculating the risk and understanding what's truly at risk or mitigating some of those risks like you did. You, like myself, my wife has been gainfully employed for a long time. And so that was able to help with like insurance. Right. Right. right, right. <laughs> I mean, well, when I listened to the episode with your wife, yeah. I saw so many parallels, even like when you were talking about your first date, yeah. it cracks me up. So my first date with my wife, I was on the way to pick her up and my car broke down. Right. She didn't even have a cell phone mm -hmm. at this point. You know, we, she had a landline, barely any way to even get in touch with her because I had to go find, you know, <laughs> find a pay phone to give her a call. My car breaks down. It's like first real date we're going on. You know, I had no money. I remember going, <laughs> I remember going to another date shortly thereafter because she gave me another chance. Mm -hmm. And we had both got money out of the ATM. And I had $176 in my checking account. $176. I took out like 40 or whatever for dinner. We're not fancy people. And we weren't then. And she had a hundred times more money in her checking account than I had because she was working full time as a nurse while going to school. So she had like real money in there and had a full ride for school. And I had, like I said, a hundred times less money than yeah. she had. And she's kind of like your story, you right? You married well. You didn't have a wallet to buy gas. Yeah. You, <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, so the moral to this story, guys, is make sure you got a good partner in your life. Right. <laughs> Even if it's not a spouse like for us, family, whatever, you got to have help in this thing. Yeah. Like no man, no woman is an island. We all had help. I had help. You had help. Our spouses, our best friends were able to be there for us. And to help us to live this dream. Now, everyone's benefited from those things. Like in your life, your, your wife's benefited from, from your business as well. And the things, and it's not, it's not all just, again, like we talked about before, it's not all just financial. There's like yeah. being there and being able to be present for the things that matter, which is huge, right. just huge. I will never say that enough because I don't want to gloss over that because my whole thing in entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship is about freedom. It's the American dream. It's the American freedom. way. Yeah. Freedom. Right. <laughs> I feel like growing my, I can't grow hair like that, but you know, like a hair band and getting up there and having the guitar and doing my freedom thing. Anyway. All right. I digress. This is what I do. I go off on I segue, but I'll bring it back. Squirrel. All right. So tell me a little bit more about what you're doing in your business right now. You started out in entrepreneurship in 2009, right? Right. The current iteration of your business since 2013, right? Yeah. I mean, owning gyms exclusively and doing the corporate wellness piece full time is since 2013. Yeah. But again, I had a business partner until the beginning of 2016. So it's been just on me officially since 2016. Yeah. How was that transition um, going from a partnership you know, to not? Um, we were really good friends going into this and we both had the same ideas. And then we realized we were on different planets and, you know, it was, they were in Vinings and Marietta and the drive alone. When we found out we were having that second kid, I knew I couldn't do that drive anymore and still be around yeah. the kids like I wanted to be. So it kind of was the right time to kind of circle back on what I, was really important to me and sitting in a car for an hour and a half was not it. Yeah. So, so you guys still really good friends? We, we still chat. I mean, he's moved. So, you know, we don't see each other very often, but you know, we still chat when he's in town and you know, it was a, as peaceful, a dissolving of the partnership as you could have. Was and, it? Okay. You know, it was, it was fine. And you know, he's off doing his own thing, uh, farming now and not in the fitness business anymore. And yeah. He's doing, found out what he wanted to do. So, yeah. Tell us about your experiences in partnership and how that affected you. Know, this, we talk about this stuff a lot, like friends and partnerships. Yeah, I mean, it was, um, I always looked to him as a leader and was kind of like driving the bus. Yeah. And I should have looked at more as we were equal. So I learned a whole lot during that time. Nice. I wouldn't trade it. I mean, it was a really good learning experience to feel that out and dive into business with someone to lean on a little bit. We just had very different visions that we really couldn't align. So I also learned that too. Maybe I do have some idea of what I'm doing. 
and I should have spoke it up a little bit more than I did. And that's uh, not to place blame or anything like that. It's just to say we were on different planets and had maybe I spoken up a little bit, we could have gotten those planets a little more aligned and maybe maybe we'd still be doing that. I don't know. You know, so, it, we just so had different visions. What advice would you have for some folks that are out there in a business partnership right now that maybe you would have told yourself a few years back, like how to get through some of these things? Because, you know, yeah. a lot of people go in partnerships, go into business with friends. Yeah. And it can be difficult. I probably wouldn't do it with a friend. There's too much at stake there. And if you really want to be friends with that person, like forever and maintain a friendship relationship, it's hard to maintain business and friendship. It's tricky. Yeah, um, it is I'd tricky. say the same thing with family. Unless you're in the family business, I don't think I'd approach one of my family members and be like, hey, let's start a business together. Because I, I think there's, you know, you're doing Thanksgiving together. Yeah. You don't want to be fighting over, you know, P&Ls last month or something, right? Like, you don't want to do that. So the other thing I would do about getting into a partnership and, and the advice I wish I knew was don't forget your own worth, right? Like you're still worth as much as you're worth. Yeah. Despite there's somebody else in the business. So speak up, be strong. And, you know, you drive the bus a little too. And I didn't do that. I was younger. You know, he's like eight years older than me. And I thought, well, you already had a business and I'll learn a lot and hang out and maybe not speak up. And so I, I learned that you got to learn your worth. You got to speak up a little bit. That's great advice. Yeah. And I really wanted to ask you that because there are people that are in partnerships right now. And it's not, I mean, the ship sailed. You're in the partnership. Yeah. It's happening. It, it happened. So how do we make the best of it now and turn it around. And because I've interviewed lots of people that have been in business partnerships, some of them, it's been amazing. Some of them, not so amazing. My personal opinion prior to doing all the interviews that I've done with business leaders and entrepreneurs is that it was not a good idea. I haven't changed that, but I do see some of the merits of it now. Some of the merits in terms of having someone to share some of that emotional load. Um, and so, and it's a reality. It's going to happen because right. there's someone that's listening right now or someone that's not listening. And they're like, hey, I got this great business idea. Let me go get my best friend. Let me go get my cousin. Let me go get my brother. And they're going to do it. So when they listen to this, I want them to know, OK, the ship has sailed. What can I do <laughs> so we can kind of course correct, take someone else's experience and having dealt, dealt with partnerships and apply that so they can be successful or get their ship going in the right direction. So I love the advice that you have. Anything else? With that, again, clearly define your roles, figure out what you're, you're both really good at and not really good at. If you have a business partner that is good at what you are not good at doing, then they can take on that role and drive that part of the business. If you both aren't good at something, you better figure out how to outsource this instead of fighting over the thing you're both not good at doing. I and mean, clearly define that from the start. And then I think, you know, partnerships can definitely work. And ours did work. It just... Ultimately, we were heading different directions. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm really grateful for the experience. I learned so much. You know, like I always say, like that partnership and that first business really was like getting a master's degree in business coming from a chemist, right? Like I had no business experience outside of what I was able to learn in books and podcasts. And you can only get a master's degree in business by being in business. I firmly believe that. What about you? I agree. 100%. Yeah. Hey, are you a big fan of business and bourbon? Have you been to one of our events? How'd you like to interact with our special VIP guest and other like-minded business professionals just like you? Well, here's your chance. Go to businessandbourbon.live. Businessandbourbon.live. Go to our member section and set up an account. We're going to launch our new platform in 2020, and you will have the opportunity to interact with all of our guests and other great business professionals and entrepreneurs that are just like you. We'll be sharing wisdom, we'll be collaborating, and we'll be having a good time. Our, again, businessandbourbon.live. Thank you for sharing. That was a fantastic share. And there's someone out there that's listening to this that's going to be like, yo, that, that is right on point. That's what I needed. Next question for you, though. <laughs> we don't duck. We don't dodge. Since 2009, you've been in entrepreneurship. What the hell scares you about your business? What scares you? What wakes you up in cold sweats at night? Yeah, I mean, I don't fear losing it all, right? Because we've talked about my worst case, right? The worst thing that can happen. I mean, my fears are... Am I not going to reach the success level I want? Am I not going to get to the financial goals I've set for myself? Am I, 
like, what am I doing? Why am I, what am I doing this for? Right. I mean, I know I want freedom. I know that I'm trying to create a lifestyle and create something lasting. And if it all went away tomorrow, I'd be proud of what I did, but I still fear the, like, if it goes away, what's next and, and why did I do it? You know? So it's the feeling of not being successful and the pressures you get in social circles and from family. Like, again, I'm a PhD chemist owns a fitness business. I've never found another one <laughs> out there anywhere. So if anyone's listening and has one, I would love to connect with you. It would be a great conversation. But I've never found anybody that went to school for eight years to do chemistry and decided to open a fitness and corporate wellness business. So I'm looked upon in some circles, you know, friends and family, like you wear sweatpants to work every day. And you have a PhD in chemistry. Like, you've totally failed, man. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Right? If you think about people who wake up every day and put sweatpants on or gym shorts, usually they're unemployed, right? Mm hmm. Or independently wealthy, right? It's one of the two. I'm neither one of those. And you hang out with doctors and lawyers and, you know, successful accountants and, and whatnot, and you, you kind of feel small. Yeah. Because you're like, well, I, you know, even though I'm educated as well as or sometimes better than many of you, I took this route. And yes, I do wear sweatpants often. <laughs> in my workplace, right? They're very expensive sweatpants, but I still wear them, right? <laughs> so what happens because of that, that fear that you have, does that motivate you and how does it motivate you? Yeah, it's a difficult thing to balance, right? It motivates me to stay the course and continue driving, but it also creates that self-doubt, like, oh, maybe I should go be normal or set back on the path I was on originally to fit in better. But like at the end of the day, I know it doesn't matter. And I know very well that I haven't taken another paycheck since 2013. So something must be going okay. You know, it's not, nobody's starving. Nobody's dying of hunger right now. We're okay. You know, someone much smarter than me at some point said, hey, if the people around you don't reflect what it is that you want and who you want to be, <laughs> change the people that are around you. Right. And that's not them. That's my own perception of what I think. Like I'm giving them that. Yeah. Right? They're not. They don't care who. They don't care what I do, who I am, or anything. They just want to hang out, and uh -huh. I know this. But there's still that feeling like I'm not equal or something. Uh, right? and it's, it's so it's inferior. Yeah. Okay. You know, it's, yeah. You know, it's bad yeah. enough. I'm five foot seven, and then all these friends are tall, and you know, and they're. But all, you project like, big, uh, dude. I mean, you got to. You, games, right? <laughs> You're five seven, but I see six one, brother. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting out of my license. <laughs> six one. That would be funny. Five seven project six, six one, one. <laughs> i like that I if that were possible <laughs> man thanks for sharing that because that's yeah. you know that's what it's about it's on real. business of bourbon and it's real like yeah. because there's someone that's looking at you right now lots of people that are looking at you with tremendous admiration for the accomplishments that you've made in your life but i think it's important for everyone to understand that like whoever you view <laughs> As that super successful person or they're your mountaintop, they struggle with the exact same things that you do in terms of, you know, not feeling worthy at times. And we all do not yeah, feeling worthy absolutely. at times, not feeling as successful as we want to be or should be or thought we could be. But at the end of the day, if you are a family man, like my man Sam here, like myself, the only people that matter are those little ones and what they think of you. Right. And when you're there for Thanksgiving, Guess what? Right. You're the most successful person in the whole damn world. It's true. I should drop the mic on that shit. I <laughs> like that one. <laughs> I won't drop the mic because it's bad podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sipping. Mm. Ah, what do you do for fun? It's good. I like to be outside. So anytime I can get outside. I mean, last weekend we put up Christmas lights just to get outside. Yeah. Yeah, I'm aware it was like November 15th. I'm aware, right? Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> right? yeah, it's a little early. A little but early, okay. but the kids want to put decorations up. So we put lights on. It was a beautiful day. Get outside. Yeah. Now, I enjoy yard work, right? Like who likes yard work? While my wife was out of town back in the summer, I laid a whole path in our backyard, put the pavers down, did all that stuff. And I did that between the hours of like eight and midnight when the kids were asleep. I went yeah. out and did yard work because wow. I like it, right? You know, That's throw a the monitor outside and yeah. just, you know, lock all the doors, right? And I love being outside. I like to hike. Uh, you name the sport, I'll go do it. Played soccer and tennis in high school and then again in college. Mm -hmm. I mean, high school, I played pretty much everything, but college was soccer and tennis. And then grad school, played soccer the whole time. I mean, yeah. I like to be outside and active. I like to make bad music on the guitar. <laughs> uh, but that's more of like a therapeutic thing, right? Yeah. If I can just spend a few minutes doing something I'm really, really bad at doing, it's really therapeutic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, watch some sports, you know, the normal guy stuff. And then, you know, read a book, do a puzzle, a board game. 
you name it. There's very yeah. few things I don't enjoy. So I ask that because I think it's important. Tell me what you think. I think that it's important to have those outlets as entrepreneurs. It can't all be about the business right. 100% of the time. We got to have something that takes us away from there right. mentally and physically to where we can kind of disconnect. Uh, and you said physically, right? So yeah. like, you know, I have to look the part in fitness, you know, but I actually really enjoy building the body in whatever capacity that is. And I'm not much of an aesthetics guy. I don't really care so much about that. It's yeah. more performance, strength, longevity. So, always, that's what the people that are like yoked and look great always say, oh, I don't care about yeah. it. I, it's true though, I really don't, you know? Like, <laughs> this guy's ripped over here, guys. cut some body fat or whatever, but like I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. I care about, you know, I have two goals in life. You know, one is I want to be able to go to the bathroom on my own on the day I die. <laughs> and that's not a one I'm talking about do a twosie on the day I die. You know yeah. how much mobility and strength and balance goes into doing all that stuff? Yeah. A lot. So if I've taken care of myself and hopefully I live a long life, I should be able to do that. And two is I want to shoot my age in golf. And at my current, you know, rate here, that means I'm going to be like 78 to 88 before this happens. Yeah. So I better be in damn good shape if I'm going to shoot an 88 at 88 years old, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's where it's going. Love it. So, Love it. Yeah. So as my resident, like, fitness scientist here, can you give our audience just, in your opinion, a great routine or, and I'm not talking about my individual, we don't got to get into detail, but a great routine for the busy entrepreneur, busy business professional that's like, oh, I don't, I don't have time. And how can they get the most bang for their buck? What sort of workouts? What do you think? I'll give you two answers, really. If you're a busy professional, the best thing you can do for yourself is walk and eat well oh. and get your sleep, right? And manage your stress. Those are the best. Those are, it's like the low hanging fruit. All you got to do is move every day. How long do you walk? 10 minutes. 10 minutes every hour, every two hours, right? It doesn't have to be, you don't have to go out for an hour and a half long walk. Just do it frequently. The body needs to move. The absence of movement is what? death right yeah you stop moving you're pretty much dead whether you're still alive as you're dying if you're not moving you're gonna die faster so you move yourself make sure your nutrition's on point whatever that means i don't care what you eat just as long as it works for you sleep find out how much sleep you need and manage your stress now if you want to get into workouts i find the kettlebell to be the most effective tool for whatever your general physical preparedness goal is whether it's aesthetics whether it's performance whatever Using the kettlebell gets you the most bang for your buck. If you had to just pick one movement from there, the kettlebell yes. swing, absolutely. Kettlebell swings. You do 100 a day for a month, then check in with your aesthetics. I bet they're better. I bet your cardio is better. I bet your, your muscle mass is better. Lean muscle mass should be better. Your fat's going to be down. I guarantee you will lose weight as well. Uh, Simple stuff. What about how heavy should that kettlebell be? It's a tricky question, yeah. right? Because there's a lot of technique and form that goes into a kettlebell swing. So if mm -hmm. you're going to learn a kettlebell swing, go learn from somebody who is a good coach, reputable, and has been taught how to swing a kettlebell, you know, effectively. So we're a Strong First affiliated gym. You find a Strong First coach anywhere in the country, guarantee they can teach you to swing a kettlebell. If you're in Atlanta, where can they find you? In Kirkwood. Mm -hmm. But we also go to any business in Atlanta and we'll do kettlebell workshops. We also go out to breweries and do kettlebells and brews every couple of weeks. Too. I love so kettlebells anywhere. I love I mean, them. The and kettlebell I... swing is mm -hmm. one of the most athletic movements you can do. So it works like everything. Everything. Right. Yeah. And who doesn't want to work everything with one movement? And a yeah. kettlebell can be thrown in a car. If you want to pay the baggage fee, you can throw a 50 pound kettlebell in a suitcase. Mm -hmm. And that's your whole suitcase. Right. And fly with it. I mean, it's super easy. They're becoming more mainstream. You can find them everywhere. And it's, uh, it's probably the simplest thing you can do for yourself. Okay, so quick mm -hmm. entrepreneur workout. They're going to do 30 minutes. That's all they got. Okay. What do they do? They do kettlebells. What, what do we I do? I would uh, warm up and breathe for two to five minutes, do a little bit of natural movement patterning, crawling, rolling around on the floor, and do some diaphragmatic breathing just to get your body ready. Spend the next 20 minutes doing some sort of kettlebell routine. I mean, if you want the simplest one, 10 kettlebell swings a minute for 20 minutes. 10 kettlebell, kettlebell swings, swings a minute. A minute. Russian kettlebell minutes. swings. None of that overhead American stuff, right? Most people don't have the mobility to do that. And so you not get overhead. Very, you get very We're talking Russian what comes up to the shoulder, them, yeah, right? Shoulder height. Arms extended, shoulder height, abs tight, glutes squeezed. 10 powerful swings per minute for 20 minutes. You That's do that it. math real quick, right? You're going to sneak in 200 swings in that 30-minute workout. I promise you, you will feel that. Now, what weight do you use? That's sort of on you. For most, you know, people starting out, a 16-kilogram bell is probably enough for most males or females. You want to progress up to 24, maybe 32 kilograms as you get very proficient. With what should I be using? 
You? Yeah. I've never seen you swing a kettlebell, but I would start you at probably 16, and I'd say, all right, Whoa, show me you can swing that. I'm feeling disrespected. I know, right? You're a big he dude. He says 16. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I wouldn't be responsible if I gave you a 24 and you hurt yourself. Right? There we so go. There we go. Progress up. I mean, you probably end up somewhere swinging 32, 36 kilograms. Man, I swing right? double that, brother. You swing huh. a 72 kilogram. Okay, kilogram. I'm joking. <laughs> You're like swinging me, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's no, go. I mean, we'll that's do it right now. That's the simplest. Kettlebell it, challenge. You know? Let's go. Your last five minutes, you breathe, you roll around on the floor again, and you're done. It's 30 minutes. Love it. Yeah. There you go, guys. You didn't expect that. Now go do it. Now. Yeah. Go do it. But most importantly, do something. Right. Walk. We need this. Every day. We are dying, literally. Like, I'm seeing it. You've seen it. Yeah. Entrepreneurs, like, the stress is killing us. So do this stuff. I beg you, please. It will change your life. It is important. And you absolutely have the time. When someone tells you, oh, I don't have the time. Oh, my God. I want to just slap them in the face. Yes, you have time. We all have time. Kettlebell fits under your you desk. You got to make time. Right? Because if you, if you don't make time, uh, it's, nope. the time's going to be made one way or another. It's going to. Just... All right. Sam, where can people find you? Drop your social, all your stuff. Where can they find so you? You can find me personally at Sam Magavro, but our business is at Smudge Fitness. It. At S A M, not that part. M. Your last name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> last right. name M U G A V E R O. That's personal stuff. LinkedIn, Facebook. What else? Instagram. Yeah. If you want to see our business, it's at Smugs Fitness, and I'll spell that too because people put two G's in it. Yeah. It's S M U G S Fitness, and we're on you know LinkedIn there, Facebook, Instagram, across uh, Twitter. Yeah. All the social media platforms that I currently know of. Tell them a little bit about your staff out there, because I know you've got a really dope. So we've got, really trained, uh, you know, a lot of people staff. say we have uh, the most diversely educated staff in the business. We've got a general manager who's got an MBA, was a stay-at-home mom, and now she's doing fitness full time. Prior to being a stay-at-home mom, she worked for the Fed, so she's really business savvy. We got a full-time physical therapist who's also a CSCS, so. Strength coach, really, really smart guy, and everybody else. Uh, we've got currently on staff eight Strong First kettlebell instructors. Strong First is currently the most reputable and, and widely recognized kettlebell affiliation there is out there. We're a Strong First affiliated gym. The rest of my staff, you know, they vary. We've got a little bit of everything. We've got powerlifting coaches, Olympic weightlifting coaches, um, natural movement pattern from uh, original strength. We've got all kinds of different coaches. Um, nice. And everything's custom. You know, even if you come to our classes, our classes are capped at 10, so you're getting a very individual experience. We've got a nutrition coach on staff as well. We contract with a psychologist who helps us with the sleep and stress management piece. So when we go into your business, we come in and we assess your employees' climate for change. If there's any barriers to working out with their boss, we, we ask those questions, and we try to create a, a very customized program to your business. That's what's up. So, guys, if you're in Atlanta, look my man Sam up. If you're not, look him up as well. Great guy, great business. Very much appreciate you sharing your story sharing your advice and i think it was a fantastic show so we get to end it now with the only way we can end on business and bourbon i know you've listened to every episode oh, man okay you can do it by yourself then we out there it is thank you for listening to the business and bourbon podcast please subscribe and if you like us give us a five-star rating if you don't uh, have another drink maybe you'll feel a little bit differently if you'd like to check out our videos, you can go to businessandbourbon.tv. That's businessandbourbon.tv. In addition to that, we're currently touring the United States with our Business and Bourbon Live show. It's a fantastic show where we do a whiskey education and we do some Q&A and it's a great networking event as well. So if you'd like to attend one of our Business and Bourbon Live events, you can go to businessandbourbon.live. Again, that's businessandbourbon.live. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you the next time.